Hi, I'm Sarah O'Roy, Executive Director of the Red Brick Center for the Arts. The Red Brick mission is to bring together artists, nonprofits, entrepreneurs, community members, and visitors into a space in which they can interact with each other, share ideas, and grow a community together. There are 12 artists who have studio space in the Red Brick. These resident artists are integral to the Red Brick serving as a hub for collaboration. They also contribute to the larger dynamic arts and culture scene of Aspen and the Roaring Fork Valley. Hi, I'm Liz Heller and I'm a ceramic artist. Well, I'm classically trained as a sculptor and I use digital fabrication processes like 3D printing or laser cutting or CNC milling uh, to create and design models, which then I make plaster molds of and slip cast. Uh, slip casting is an industrial process and it's a way that I can get really hardline geometry into clay, which it tends to not want to do. So marrying the 3D modeling and the digital fabrication with working with my hands in the studio is a nice way to break up different parts of the process. So when I'm mold making, that's a big problem solving stage. Uh, every object needs to be molded differently. Um, and then once I start casting, uh, that's kind of when I can shut my brain off and just go into autopilot and I kind of get into a meditative flow state. It's a very messy process, but it's really satisfying, especially when you get a new piece out of a mold for the first time and you see that it worked. And there's no guarantees in ceramics. Uh, there's a lot of failure. There's a lot that can go wrong. So when you, when everything does go right, it's really kind of an amazing feeling. I'm Michael Bonds, and I am a ceramic artist concentrating on wheel throwing functional and non-functional work. To start off with, the pieces that you see behind me here are all raku clay bodies that I throw with. Basically what happens is you put it into a reduction chamber. I add different chemicals and leaves, sawdust, pine needles, all kinds of different things that go into it. I've really kind of gotten into the plates and platters a lot more because it gives you a big surface area to be able to work from. And uh, you have, a, it's almost like a canvas that you can sit down and play with. Aspen inspires me because realistically we've got pretty much anything and everything here. The outdoors, animals, leaves, mountains, skiers, you know, it, you can't be not enthused about being where we live. It's just uh, pretty every day, and it's pretty to come to work every day. I mean, if you can consider artwork work, that's the fun part. Well, I think I am the longest resident artist in, the, in here right now. I think I've been here probably almost 20 years now, I think. So it's, I, you know, time goes so fast, I can't keep up with it. Time is not of the essence. It's just the, the amount of work that I make. My name is Molly Peacock and I am a ceramic artist and I make abstract sculpture. I work with porcelain clay and I make larger scale sculptures that are inspired by our surrounding landscape and clouds and the connection between the land and the sky. Um, I'm also thinking about uh, environmental issues and uh, sort of that tension of gravity pulling down versus lifting up um, and I try to express that in my forms. I have been a resident here I think seven or eight years, a long time, and I really value um, working alongside other artists, especially my studio mates. Just the productive energy of coming in and seeing what they're doing, and it propels you forward creatively. I think that energy is really important for creative work. Well, the Red Bricks got a lot of great opportunities here, not only by having lots of other artists around, we get a variety of different kinds of people coming through here, which is really fun. I think the best part about having our studio here is the community that we have, not only just within the artists, but with the locals and our tourist guests. And I've been collaborating with Kate Flynn of Mineral and Mine. I've been making some jewelry display pieces for her. We co-designed a piece 
um, a number of pieces, ring cones actually. And so I came to her with the idea and she then took it and made the mold for the ring cones. And then together we come up with color schemes and paint them. I'm Kate Flynn and I'm a metalsmith. Metalsmithing is the use of a torch that is powered by gas, so I use acetylene. Any bending, shaping, hammering, cutting, all that happens before or after you use the torch to do the actual soldering, which is the melding of the metal together. I do a lot of different types of jewelry making, but metalsmithing is the most in-depth um, and requires the most training. It's dangerous if you don't know how to do it and you're not trained properly. So I work with mostly sterling silver, also 14 karat gold fill, and semi-precious and precious gemstones. I find my stones mostly at gem shows and I develop those relationships over a long period of time. Um, and that effort and time commitment that goes into stone hunting is one of the biggest parts of my job as a maker. Um, seeking out unique stones for my work um, not only brings a lot of joy, but also is really what drives my inspiration, I would say. I don't really go hunting for inspiration. I feel like it finds me through those stones that I look for. All of these I bought from lapidaries. Some of them I also bought from the miner. So like all of this, this section right here, I bought these from the man who took them out of the ground and cut and polished them. Um, my favorite stones, it's a long list. It's hard to narrow it down, but turquoise is definitely up there and labradorite and opals. It's just the color and the variety of choices of types of turquoise and how earthy and unique every piece of it is. Opals and labradorite, both of them have a iridescence that almost looks fake, that really draws me to them. My name is Michael McConnell and I've been a resident artist for maybe six and a half, seven years at the Red Brick. I do mixed media, abstract paintings and some collaging along with it um, in acrylics mostly. Uh, my background is in, is in environmental sciences and landscape architecture. And uh, so I bring a lot of um, my a lot of my ideas for painting involve diagramming and dot and drawing to start with. It all begins with sort of the, some, an idea, a conceptual idea, and and, um, and while I usually don't end up where I think I'm going to end up with paintings, um, there's there's always elements of of drawing and of materials and um, collaging together different ideas and different materials. It's, it's a lot about um, finding ways to bring together my different ideas and creating sort of visual space. It's um, interesting to me anyway. And uh, it's like, like these two behind me here, the two, two large ones. Um, it's more directly just painting on canvas, which I lo love to do too. But I like like the, the ideas of sort of the, the film noir um, effect. Uh, I'm bringing that into a painting. Uh, hi, my name is Jesse Cheney. I am a photographer and resident artist at the Red Brick for coming up on my third year now. My work and my photography and my art is inspired by really abandoned spaces that overlooked kind of details of the magic and the ever, everyday unseen light and glimmers of hope and really the least expected of places and whether that's through my travels, um, through studio practice, through an intentional site visit, it's really something I'm constantly seeking and exploring, and especially in this current climate we're in. I think these spaces hold um, an element of hope for me. There is something about that that represents a decay and a rebirth and a regrowth of life and kind of a cycle and a continuation of constant evolution, whether it's in our society, as artists, as individuals, um, and I really just try to seek that and something to look forward to and hopeful for and to document that through the camera. I'm also really inspired by just the natural element of nature and the seasons and regrowth. And yeah, I think light is really kind of my my faith or my belief source in um, a higher power, other energies, and I all of my work is shot with natural light. I don't do any retouching, any added lights. I just, I believe in kind of seeking that natural light of the day and what it brings. And um, just, I think as much as you can aim to get a certain look in the camera, the camera and the light, the relationship with light forms its own whole dynamic together. And what that captures is still really inspires me and blows me away always. I get my inspiration from other artists, from other people, from their practice. Um, I love being around painters, sculptors, 
jewelry designers, fellow photographers, and I just think being a part of a collective, a part of a community like Aspen has, and how art is contributing, how it inspires people, how we uplift each other through that, and really learn from one another. We can't do it alone, and so I think to be inspired by other artists in their process is a really um, great experience. My name is Art Burroughs. I'm a resident artist here at the Red Bit in Aspen, and I am a digital painter. I do a lot of ski mountaineering, so often we're going to see big panoramics taken from higher altitudes on ski tours. So for instance, in, in this piece, uh, this was an exploration uh, where Chris Davenport and I were trying to ski uh, Mount Sir Sanford. It had never been skied on its south face. Um, we didn't have ideal conditions. There was a large avalanche that came down 5,000 feet and eliminated the route, but we did get to go on an, an amazing for a glacier tour across that part of the Columbia Mountains. And uh, it was um, very difficult, but very inspirational in terms of the terrain that we were traveling in. I love natural history. I love natural sciences. So I look at the phenomena in nature. So for instance, the surface tension on this tiny leaf, um, how does that happen? How, does that, how do those molecules hold together, you know? And, the biggest landscape, how the weather, I constantly watch the weather being a ski mountaineer and a ski tour. And in this shot, we're seeing the weather develop in the Elk Mountains. And so from the tiniest element to the biggest piece of nature, I'm always looking. Here working in the collective space of the Red Brick Art Center in Aspen, it is, um, it's a wonderful opportunity to see what other artists, what my co-artists here are doing. Um, and it's great to get an interaction with them and share ideas and appreciate what they're doing and where they're exploring with their work. My name is Caitlin Dunn. I am a jeweler and metalsmith. I make all types of jewelry, necklaces, earrings, bracelets, rings, and most recently I started making belt buckles. I work with uh, sterling silver, 14 and 18 karat gold, and bronze for a lot of my cast pieces. Either semi-precious or precious stones. I also work a little bit with diamonds, which I'm getting into a little bit more. I've started doing a few more um, engagement rings, but all those stones I buy, I try and buy natural, environmentally friendly, conflict-free. My favorite thing is probably working with gold and soldering. It's just a really easy material to work with. It's soft, it cleans up well, and I just love how it looks. I like a very simple, elegant look, more on the delicate side of things. But I also like having it have a handmade feel. I, I like leaving a little bit of a mark, a maker's mark. I grew up here in Aspen, so um, I've always loved our mountains and inspired by them. So I actually took a class at CMC and from there I designed my room bells necklaces and, and we cast them and, and I love the process so much. So I've expanded to rings and bracelets and now I'm doing um, a Sopra series, also Aspen Mountain and also Aspen Leaves. I love working at the Red Brick. It's such a creative environment. I love just walking out in the hall. I I'm surrounded by art from artists all over. It's always changing. If I ever need a break from work, I can pop my head into a different studio, see what the other artists are working on. I love having Tammy next door if I have a quick question or I want to get her opinion on something. Uh, my name is Tammy Lane and um, I'm a painter and a potter. Uh, I do oils and watercolors and ceramics. Mainly a plain air painter, uh, so I'm out on location. Uh, painting uh, most of the time if the weather permits and uh, about 70% of the year the weather permits um, uh, and then I do my finished work in the studio in the winter months when it's uh, snowing and blizzarding and I am in the studio. I take a lot of time when I'm going out to uh, a location to find what I feel like is an interesting scene uh, that gets me excited about what I'm looking at. Uh, then I usually start out by doing a, a very quick thumbnail sketch and do my homework before I actually start painting. The reason plein air painters try to work quickly and, and a lot of times small is to capture that light right at the moment. And um, if it's a fleeting sunset or, or just the way the light is hitting something at the moment because the sun came out of the clouds, um, that's what you're trying to capture. It's a lot easier to paint in the studio. 
but I get a lot better results when I start a painting in the field. You have the sun, you have the bugs, you have the wind, you have all kinds of things that can be very distracting, but they also, you feel it different than when you're in the studio. Mindy Vernon, I'm an abstract artist and a landscape artist. I love to work in oil paint, but if you look around my studio, you can see I'll work in pastel, I'll work in gouache, I'll work in graphite, I love to draw. So really, anything. I think my process is really about combining landscape, uh, kind of combining abstraction and reality. I want to make paintings that come from inside me. I want to paint not just what's in front of me, but how I feel about what's in front of me. So for instance, this painting is I was riding horses with my girlfriend Zia and we were in the woods in the fall. So I want to paint how I felt when I was in the woods with Zia. So more from inside, uh, but I really sometimes when I go to abstraction and I think, oh, I got to do a landscape. I got to get back to reality. If I work too long on something, I find it's really hard for me not to wreck it. And a lot of times I'll work from like these small paintings here. I'll work uh, creating small um, rough images, which I really like. And, and then I translate those to large abstract images. Uh, but these are my starting points. And these are also croppings of my other paintings. So I go from like cropping large oil paintings to making smaller ones. And then from here, I create large paintings that are abstractions. So I was always a graphic designer or a painter. So I always felt like an artist. If you're creating every day, then you're an artist. You know, I always felt like an artist, but now I feel like maybe more of a painter. I feel like a painter. Well, I love my studio. The studio is a, is a dream come true. You know, I got Red Mountain outside my window and Aspen constantly inspiring me. And this community of artists, I really love working in this building. This building has a history, you know, as an old school in Aspen and you can feel that. And I love my fellow artists. I love collaborating with the other artists in the building. They inspire me all the time. Their work ethic, watching them work, watching what they created that day. Uh, Nancy Colgren. I'm an abstract color field artist. Color is my main focus, of course, but I love to let the painting evolve almost on its own. As I work through the painting, I'm not particularly attached to the form, and I like the spontaneity of having a background that is, let's say, quite loose, and then letting the painting come through. I like to blend my colors. I like them to be sensual, sensitive, kind of alluring, and to bring me in and bring people around me in so that they're more sensory than specific. I just want them to, to be happy and work with each other. The red brick affords you some interaction with people that you normally probably wouldn't interact with and that um, the interplay of people and the communication is very helpful to pursuing your art. My name is Emily Chaplin and I am an oil painter. I had the good fortune of traveling uh, around the world for my work uh, the past 10 years as a photographer. So I've taken those um, memories and scenes and photographs and those are the things that I just love to paint and bring new life to. Um, I also love painting my home of Aspen, um, scenes of Aspen trees. A quote that I've read is, paintings are windows, and that is kind of my goal, is to create beautiful windows for someone to put in their home. The red brick is amazing. It's so wonderful to be around other artists and surrounded by other artists and be inspired by them. Just walking down the hallway and seeing the amazing art just brings me renewed sense of inspiration every day. I want to thank all the resident artists for participating in this film and sharing their ideas and thoughts about their work and artistic practice.